Hey everyone, welcome back to another 31 Minute Podcast. Jordan. Good morning. <coughs> Jackson. Good morning. <coughs> How you going? Really good this morning. Lots of people ask you, ask about you and how's life? Yeah, it's pumping along. Yeah? Yeah, it's going good. Got good. a lot going on at the moment, so. So you, you opted for the mullet. Yeah, it looks good. You got a mullet now. You and Tara are the only people that don't like it. Nah, I, I don't not like it. It just, you look like Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> nah, I'm going to get it, re- I'm getting it cut on... Friday next week. Yeah, but it seems like you, you're that excited to get your hair cut. Like it's you forget everything apart from your hair cut. No, and, yeah. and you plan it like three <coughs> weeks out, and you you talk about you give us updates on how far away the haircut is. Uh, why, why you, you give us that? updates on everything why, that why you're you heading that? towards in life. Well, like maybe I've got you're it from just that you. excited about your mullet. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I, think, <laughs> I just like it, and I like your 31 minute hat too. No, oh, thanks. It's, it's I didn't bring it today because I wanted it. I keep getting like my hair's itchy. I think it's because I'm wearing hats. When yeah. I'm when it's wet, so I'm just gonna let it dry this morning. Could be nits. Could be nits. That's what Sarah said. They don't exist. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you used to say that all the time. And Paris had like it's like at, at Jackson's mum's house. She was forever trying to get nits out of their hair. But I'm like at my place. I'm like, you don't have nits. What are you talking about? And it's like, but she'd be. I'd go over there to see them most days, and she'd be like, pulling like a like a gorilla. You know, like picking what, nits out of their them? hair all the time. Yeah, I'm like, you don't have nits, and I like, I don't even know that nits exist. I forgot oh, that was even a thing. Yeah, Dad used to think nits don't exist. Every day, say. pulling nits out of yeah, their yeah, hair. Like, Paris used to have go to the barber, and the barber's like, I'm not touching that it, guy's no, hair. It was Paris. It was Paris. She used to have like thousands. Uh, the, I don't the, know. the boys uh, didn't really have any, but yeah, Paris used, used to, get to a lot. tell you you did because so she could play with your hair or something. <laughs> no, like, I used to watch it. I never saw a knit in my life. I forgot. I forgot that was a thing. Yeah, Dad doesn't believe in knits. Dad Good. thinks they don't exist. <laughs> yeah, that, that well, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into it. Straight into the questions. Good to see you, Jackson. All right, questions. First one was, um, what if you have an extremely negative spouse? Well, there's this great thing called divorce. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Um, well, I don't, it's hard to without like knowing them and knowing yeah the situation. Um, there's the, it's a really funny one because if you talk about energy, like attracts like, and different frequencies push it away. So <laughs> it's. It, but it takes a while, like, because all of a sudden you just don't go, oh, I'm just going to love them and then they'll disappear. Mm. Like, it sort of doesn't, doesn't exactly work like that. Um, you know, I've been divorced a couple of times and it just gets to a point where it gets real weird and hard to fix because you've got so much negative energy. Like, I yeah. Used to, yeah, I used to just hate being made to do things. And, like... Um, you know, their, their view and their opinion on what you should be doing like a, you know like you should be sitting yeah. at home on a Sunday afternoon having barbecues mm. listening to Neil Diamond and I'm like no I'll do a video or do something else or whatever you know like and it was just this opposite energy mm. and it just get worse like it's really difficult do you I, think do you think it's just pretty simple you just probably don't like each other pretty much like mm. I reckon I reckon like I, I think, um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just. I'm just. I, I think sometimes things have an expiry. Mm. You know, like it's really, it's really hard. Even in a relationship, like let's say Jackson is with a girl now. How do you know what they're going to be like at thirty-five? Yeah, like you don't. twelve it's years impossible. down the track. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, it takes a really special relationship to sort of go. Yeah, I still. I think you're amazing like because mm. you, you grow and you change and your de- desires change and it, it's really tricky you know like um you know people say oh, i should work on it yeah for sure but what what if you just like you know what if you just want different things out of life as time goes on because that that happens mm. i'm a very different person today than i was 20 years ago yeah. you probably know don't you why like if it's if you can rescue it or like you say when the rot, when the the rot sinks in it's very hard to turn yeah. it around it is it, it is mm. 
it, it's um it, it's such a hard one but if you've got a really negative partner oh, i don't like negative hanging around negative people mm. so why would you have to be there like you know i sometimes people just make you feel yuck yeah and like nothing in this world says hey you just got to be with this person if they're not going to change you you can't change them it's like i can't change you george mm. like you know I, i've got to met, like work with who you are but what overrides that and i tell you all the time is i genuinely appreciate who you are mm. and your success i get very pumped by I, we were just talking about this before we got on and i yeah. said you're going to be way more successful than me mm. like i can see it and my part of my focus and responsibility is helping you get there you know, so like if you've got a person that just criticizes you and not cheering you on and because I think that's what a partnership is about, like, mm. you know, and you know, I've been around a while. So it's like I've got to see a few different things. When you've got someone in your corner that's actually as keen on your goals as you are, if not sometimes even keener, like get, helping you bust through the times like yesterday, you had a really average day mm. and we spoke, we, we drilled down deeper, like what do we need to do? What, and I was feeling a bit weird yesterday yeah. i don't know what was going on with the moon but it was something um but if you don't have a cheerleader in your corner like that's not a relationship you know like I, I think part of a relationship is you wanting great things for your partner just as much as you know they do for you and sometimes even more for them mm. um and and that i reckon that's where the special source is you know, like you genuinely have this desire to want them to do really well and not change them. Like, I think that's where people go wrong. They insert their expectation on, the you person. should be doing this. Yeah. And I understand you can't just like run rampant, but if you're in a relationship, you sort of want to hang around with them anyway. You know, like, mm. um, but I think once people start to go, well, oh, hang on, no, don't. Because when you meet, it's funny, when you meet someone, they're attracted. Look, I'm a classic example. Mm. People get attracted to, you know, my drive and, you know, my focus and this, but when they're with me, it drives them nuts. Yeah. Like, literally drives them nuts. Like, they're just like, you, you're just, like, relentless. Like, on, you know, up yeah. at 3.30. Like, last night, Tara was in bed, and I saw her get up at, like, I was just a bit, fidgety like i wake up at 12 and i'm like mm, look at my phone for a minute go back to lay back down put my mask on like this and then i was a bit fidgety so she gets up at like 1 30 and like scurries into the other room because i'm just like mm. flipping around in the bed everywhere like whatever um like i'm a bit of a unique person to be with and that would drive some people really nuts you know yep. so but they like that i like i've been there before Women like when I'm like, oh, blah, 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 like, you know, he's so doing this, doing that. But to be with me is like a bit, yeah, it's a bit like nonstop. <laughs> and then over, I don't know how to explain and it. Then, and then they think, oh, well, what have I, I done? I can, I, can, I can potentially change him over time. That, that's what we're then, talking about. Yeah. And then it's. Yeah, I can hang change on a second. It. Sorry, that's what I was yeah. just talking about. Yeah, then I can. You're the same. You're mm. exactly the same. Mm. You know, it's like all your. I'm trying to say to you, don't do 10 things like boxing, jiu-jitsu, golf, this. And I'm like, there's a better way to do it. But you keep wanting to do it. So I've got to work around it. You know, but if I said to you, George, it's golf lessons or this, like make a choice. You'd go, yeah, stick it, stick yeah. it straight up your bum. <laughs> you know, <laughs> anyway. Next question. Yeah. Um, this one's, someone said everyone... A physicist. This is a, this is a comment <laughs> off TikTok. This is a comment off TikTok. Co comments, comments on TikTok from from Helsky one two three. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love it when they're under like aliases. Yeah, yeah, like so sure. brave. Mm. Um, everyone is a a physicist, and it's the wrong word, but he said everyone's a physicist these days. How you think you're qualified to speak with so much assertion is funny to me. Yeah. Everyone's a physicist. For a start, I can't spell physicist. <laughs> yeah. um, His grammar is pretty poor, but <laughs> there you go. I'm pretty sure he's saying who gives you credibility to say what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And look, if you've gone to university and you've got a physicist, physicist degree... It's probably a psychiatrist, potentially. No, physicist is like physics. Yeah, 
Okay. It that's, doesn't say what it is. Because like you, you, you sort like of. How, how the atoms work. Yeah. And yeah. All, I think, anyway. Cause, cause, he's probably meant to write psychiatrists and. Yeah, because he's well, a physicist. Auto, physicist is yeah, more physicist. with the universe. Yeah, and that's psychiatrist what we're about. is more people's emotions and things. But you flow on either side. So it could yeah. be, be both. No, he's meaning physicist. Okay. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, for instance, I've got a friend who's a. Um, uh, like, chemical engineer. He, he works for the army. Uh, works for the Air Force. He's so smart. He's so smart that he actually, you know when people are so smart they sort of sound dumb? Because mm. he's like so like introvert. He's like, you actually think he was a bit like. Elon Musk talks like that. Yeah, yeah. Very slow. Like He's the smartest guy I've ever met. And he, he actually makes, so the Defence Force says we've got a new radar system. Russia's got a new radar system. They go to Jeff and they say, make the paint that the radar can't pick up. Mm. So he's got to get into the lab with all these physics and what do they call it? Um, physics, is it? Uh, whatever. And then make it all up from nothing. Pretty amazing. Mm. All of that sort of stuff. So smart, so qualified. But I reckon in terms of vibration and frequency and living and life and street smarts, I'd probably know more than him. Mm. But he knows... He knows way more on molecular structure and this and that different. When I talk about stuff, I'm not saying that I know everything at all. Mm. I'm saying, I've, what's that? That was a spider web. Oh, I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm saying all I can do is look back in life and say, this is how I turned my life around. This is how I attracted a reasonably decent business. This is how, what I worked through and all the mistakes that I made and all the good things that came and this is where I'm going. And this is what I've learned to use now, looking forward to achieve the goals I want to achieve. Mm. That's all. You know, and really listen to Esther Hicks for like 20 years. So, you know, when people say, I got a comment yesterday, there's so many like good comments on TikTok. Like people are pretty brutal on there. Like they say whatever they want on there, which mm. is good. Mm. But um, so many people have said, I really try to listen to Esther Hicks, but she i just can't grasp it yeah but she they say you break it down so easily like i can really understand it and i think that's the benefit of when people listen to what we're talking about mm. it's more like i'm just getting all of that info life this practice blah blah and then esther all the way through and other people joe vitale i can't really um joe dispenza didn't really gel with him too much like he's more of like intellectual side of law of attraction mm. but um that's all we're sharing can i give you my opinion on this yeah i read that and he says oh who gives you the credibility to talk about that my results yeah. that's what it does <laughs> like that's what it is like let's be really honest about it it's yeah. the person's results yeah. like i had a real problem in university when i was doing a business degree and they mm. changed it so business people couldn't speak anymore they had to do masters i used to think i completely what do you respect mean by that so when I first started my business degree, you as a successful business person that's built a very, very large real estate company would come in and talk about <laughs> the challenges, what you did. Oh, yeah, Basically, you're, good. it was fantastic. And then the mm. university said, no, hang on a second. No more, do, no more um, like business people are speaking. You have to have a master's. It takes a long time to get a master's in mm. business. It can be 10 years. So these people that were lecturing had never run a business. And I mm. thought... I don't care if you eat all eggs. I don't care if you train in the morning. I don't care what books you've read out of. You haven't run a business. Mm. You just haven't. Mm. Like I can't sit here and listen to you until you actually get out there and run a business. And you have problem with real estate coaches that haven't I do. done real estate too. And I, I think it's the same thing. So to answer his questions, it's your results. Like mm. no one can argue with the results. So you you have achieved your results through frequency, through hard work, through managing your emotions, through this. So you have all of the credibility to talk about it. Mm. If you hadn't, or you were like me three years ago, people would be like, mate, that guy's done nothing. What is he even, <laughs> what is he even saying? For sure. Yeah. I'd write back, definitely. I haven't done anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just shut, shut up for 10 years. Yeah. That, that's yeah, my opinion. Right. Yeah, yeah, you, you are yeah. right. That's, that's well put. You know, I, you know, when I talk about the best body in Australia, mm. um, and there you go, another example. Yeah. At some point, somebody's going to say, how did you do that? Yeah. And you're going to say, with this diet, with this training, someone's going to go, oh, I wouldn't eat that. And it's like, well, I did, and I got the best body in Australia. Yeah. So yeah. shut up. Yeah. 
It's sort of like, yeah, that's right. It's sort of like why I'm talking about it because I'm like, um, I'm saying to people, like, I don't, I'm not really like a person that goes, hey, look at this. Like, so they go, oh, you're cool. Like, mm. not that at all. Mm. What I'm really keen on is to, for people to, and why I've said it, and like, I don't really share my goals too much. Like, I'd set number one in McGraw back then. Mm. And then I don't really talk about too much else. Um, but the reason I've said this one is uh, because, one, it's, it's like, interesting, like, as in, well, what, what does yeah. that mean for a start? But, two, I'm creating it, and I want people to see, like, the journey that I go on because all of the things that I've learned over the years, I've got, I've got to manage time now. I've got to, I've got to I'm 50. Mm. So that's, like, I'm interested to see what I could do there. You can't hide the work on your body. Like, you can't lie. Like, it's, you can't say, because in real estate, people say all the time, oh, mate, I'm number one in the company, or whatever. Like, they say, I write $5 million in fees. They don't. Mm. It's like, they don't. They, they make a, half these people make things up. Mm. But the thing with the body is, you can't, like, you either did it or you didn't. Mm. Like, there's nothing in the middle. And then I've relearned all of the working out and then all of the nutrition I've got to stick to, like, otherwise you could go work out all you want. But if you're not eating right, and I mean right, and I'm relearning the whole thing, you're not going to, like, this thing is not going to happen, you know? And it's like, that's why I've put it out there. I'm like, let's see if I can, everything I've learned in this moment in time over the next few years, mm. let's see what happens with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's like... um. Yeah, it's it's sort of like what that guy's talking about. What qualifies you? Well, let me show you yeah. and just see what I can do. And wherever I land, I'm going to land, but I'm not going to land there without giving it a million percent, mm. like a million. Like I'm so invested in it. And when I, when I get there and people say, I just had one today. Like this lady just wrote on Instagram this morning. She wrote, um, I haven't got my glasses on, um, from an... Erat erastic point of view or something i don't know what it says um is it is there such a thing as the best body like laughing face mm. isn't that subjective yeah it is but what people are going to do i reckon at some point and my whole life i've spent a little bit on the left like as in a little bit people go oh yeah whatever like don't believe me even when i went for number one in mcgrath john mcgrath said oh, i don't know you're a terrible like you're competing against people who are in the city selling way more expensive properties and i'm like no i can do it like i don't care about the time i can do this mm. and it's something goes off inside of me yeah and it's like um i just like uh, i really want to like people to go whatever you want to do you, the commitment level that you're going to do and all of the other stuff, the energy and the this, what's it going to take for you to do that? Because I think sometimes people would like the idea of achieving something, but are they really to like able to absorb themselves mm. and make changes in life? Because I'm changing my whole life at the moment to allow this to happen. What's at the end? Nothing. Not really. I just want to see what I can do knowing what I've learned along the way so far. That's why I've put it out there, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's 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 cool to watch. Yeah, so we'll see. You know, um, did you watch? Did you want one more question before you yeah, get into your question. topic? Yeah. Um, and I've got to get a better body than Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I'm not even there yet. No. Nah. No. Nah. You to get your plate taken out of your legs soon. It's February. February. I keep skipping legs. Yeah. yeah. Like I kind of have to. It's weird. Yeah. That's all right. Jackson's got a huge plate down these legs. He's broke his leg in half when he was a teenager. This is a good question. I, li yeah. I like this one. So it's from an anonymous person. Basically, I summarise it. He's saying he's familiar with the story of Tara and yourself, yeah. like where you spend a bit of time apart. He's yeah. saying he's just split up with the love of his life. Yeah. And he's saying, what does he need to do to attract her back into his life at a later date? He's certain that she's the one for him. At the moment, they're not together. They're living apart, but... He can't basically get her out of his mind and he wants to work out a way if he can get her back in the future. Just stalk her. <laughs> 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 
Tara will laugh at this. I, I, I literally. I love that. I yeah. actually love that question so much. <laughs> well, the good thing is you you rode through this with me. Rode through it. Yeah, Mike. I was you a call. Can, you can give some comment on it. I was a call center. Yeah. Why don't you give um, some comment? I don't know. Sometimes you've got to lose people to realize you really want them. That's what I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I. I, think well, I wonder why he broke up in the beginning. Yeah. It's it's a hard one because if you, like, cheated on her. Yeah, if you did. Or so. didn't treat her well. You know, like, when, yeah, when I broke up with Tara for a year, yeah, sort of on and off, it was very messy because it was like, you know, it was a bit of a messy-ish time because I just wasn't ready sort of thing. Like, I was trying to fix up life. And then... She was like, nah, this is, this is no good. Like, you're just everywhere. She just basically exited. And then, like, I'd go over, like, at one in the morning, just ring her doorbell for about 50 times. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> she Because Tara's got this thing, right? She's a, she's a bit like OCD. And she goes... Um, Sometimes she'd say, like, because sometimes, you know, when you have a bit of an argument or whatever, or mm. you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, are you up? And you text and it's like, yeah, or whatever. And then you have this brainwave of going over and just like, ee, 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 ee. It's like <laughs> so I did. <laughs> she lives in an apartment block. And then um, I love Jacko. He's just like, what? Yeah. I was just thinking about the poor cop that would have had to walk into him yeah. ring the doorbell like this, this big massive thing and had to get rid of him if Tara called the police. Oh, she was so, it's, Tara's very like um she's very stubborn she's and stubborn she's, as, she's a woman of principle. She is. Like boom. Yeah. Sometimes, right? It'd be like she like we uh, ring cuz she have this thing. She used to say, "Oh, if you rang one more time, I would have opened." And it was always in my mind. So like after the 849th ring <laughs> <laughs> she, she'd go she'd come downstairs and just stand there and go what do you want <laughs> and I'd be like well um it's like <laughs> yeah uh, I didn't actually yeah, I, did, I didn't get to this part in my head I just didn't think you were going to open <laughs> yeah she's right but she's, she's such me a, a pain she'd come down and yeah. stand there like yeah, yeah, yeah what do you want I was like oh just to talk to you what are you talking now it's like <laughs> Anyway, it was, oh, there's some stories I can tell you. But, um, so what's the advice? If what's the, what was the question again? If you know you love someone, you're not together at the moment, but you want to try and attract them back in. I know you're saying it's depending on why you're not together, but he's saying what is it? Well, I just relentlessly pursued her. Yeah. Like I did. Like Tara actually had a boyfriend when I got her back. But c- can I jump in here too? Mm. In the b- As you were chasing her, you were like – sorting your base out as well yeah like, i was like you oh, were yeah, you I were was. changing as a person like you and you were getting yeah like i think what what she wanted out of you and what you wanted out of her was developing to a point where you're both on the same page like when it wasn't on the same page yeah. it was like she was there and you were here but as the time went on you were like yeah she, she almost she wanted, led she it to a commitment. point yeah exactly like she, she's like uh, she doesn't want mess she didn't want yeah like you know, managing. She didn't want me like, oh, you know, yeah. doing this. You, you didn't pursue her to take her back to the old life that wasn't working. No. That's what I was trying to said, say. That's, yeah, because yeah. I just wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. And I thought I was, but I wasn't because you get in there and it'd be like all over the place. And then and then one day um, I went, yep. And it was the weirdest thing. Like, it was. I, th- I reckon there was one moment. And if that moment didn't happen, like as in I didn't go and see her, well, actually, I left her. Uh, no, she yeah. went to Melbourne, didn't she? Yeah, she moved to Melbourne. She did yeah. all sorts of things. But uh, she, there was a bit of time and space, and then she texted me and said, "Do you want to talk?" And then, right at that moment, I was like, "Yep." And then we've never been apart since. Mm. But I think I had to settle down a lot. Like I had to really like get steady, like you were saying, mm. um, get a get a bit like. It's, yeah, I think girls want steadiness they don't want rubbish you know they want to be treated well uh, yeah you know and i had to be that person Can you tissue back? I, I had to be that person be, and i think she saw me not exactly get there but i was on my way there and then um reminds me of that song by paul kelly to her door to her door do you know the song no basically she kicks him out and he changes his life and comes back she takes him back yeah it's a good song 
I wonder how that girl feels about the guy that just asked the question because it depends what damage has been done mm. as well, you know, and it's, yeah, it's it's like, and Tara always said to me, she, she'd, um, something about like, it's just the way you treat her. So, like, I treat her like a princess now. Mm. Like, literally just make sure her life is the best it physically can be. But, you know, that's what, I think that's what we need to do as men. Yeah. You know? Agreed. Right. Let's get on to the Topic. next part. Oh, how, do we, how does he get it back? Well, I think just focus on yourself and increase your vibration. Go really well. She'll notice. And if she wants you back, she'll get you back. Um, programming your mind for success. Good topic. Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't know why my nose runs off. Like, I think um, programming your mind, at the moment, it's like a bit turbulent out there. Like yeah. things, there's all this stuff going on everywhere. You know, you had a really average day. You're going to have some average days sometimes. Oh, I said it yesterday. But I think that's a, it's a constant daily thing to program your mind for success. Um, and I think we have this choice. Like, we have a choice of, you know, do we choose to be drawn into the the negativity you know but there's also a real a lot of opportunity as well like we were talking about it in our meeting the other day there's a lot of people that still want to do business there's mm. a lot of um good stuff happening like even even at the moment with the financial system there's i was reading a thing the other day um yesterday about it's the greatest opportunity for wealth creation ever in the history of the world right yeah. now mm -hmm. what's going on how it's all changing and it's about understanding like what do you want like what what's What's the thing that you want out of life? Like, where do you see yourself? That's where I give all my attention to. Where do I see myself? What does that look like? And then you've got to go about designing it. Mm. You know, like you as a young man, Jordan, um, how exciting is it to say, I want to be this and I want to create this. So let's say you want to be worth $100 million and you want a red Ferrari and you want a beautiful house, whatever. Whatever it is, I don't know. And then... Well, I do know, but it's like every day your job is to go, I need one step closer to that. That's where time doesn't matter. So one step closer. So who do I need to be tomorrow? Like if that guy wants the girl back, who does he need to be today to be one step closer to get her back if that's what the, the way things are meant yeah. to go? Yeah. Can you see like that choice alone? It has like a higher feeling about it. Mm. Like what do I need to do today? To have a 10 out of 10 day. And some days aren't 10 out of 10. Can I talk about mine yesterday a little bit? Yeah. I don't, want, I don't want to bring that energy forward. But I woke up late yesterday. I was an, an hour late, almost an hour late to train. Yeah. I'm never late anywhere. But I just needed a bit more sleep. And I was just behind the energy most of the day. A mm. few things going on with properties and managing and I literally got to a point, <clears throat> I had to go and get the kids little SIM cards for their Apple Watches, which I've been waiting to do. And Ash goes, oh, you've got to come into the Vodafone shop to do the thing. I didn't want to. I was like, mm, I don't want to sit in the Vodafone shop, but she couldn't do it without it. I literally walked out of the Vodafone shop at like 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the other, and I'd slept in the car for like half an hour. I thought, I need to sleep. Yeah. Because I've got to reset. And when you see, you've got all these little things you can do, to manage your energy during the day. Like sleep is a reset. And after the sleep is the funniest thing. Like I woke up feeling, you know, feeling like a bit mm. half, half, um, but better, yeah. like a bit more relaxed. And then the property we were working on, that sort of came together. Things sort of was not perfect, but a bit better. Like I sort of yeah. caught up with the energy then. Yeah. So you've got all these little things you can do to, like if you're not having the best flow to get in front of the energy mm. if you feel like a bit behind it but you've got to engage it there's no point complaining there's no point talking to people about how crap your day is there's no point this there's whatever you've got to like stop and go all right what do i need to do to feel a little bit better you know i might be go home and stop working yeah you know or do if i'm not feeling great i just do minimal work mm. like i try it because it's not, not going to happen anyway yeah like you go push harder it's going to go like all disjointed. I'll just let it, I feel fantastic today. Yeah. And yes, yesterday I was like, you know, I went to bed at like 8.30 last night. And yesterday I was like, I said to Tara, I think I just need to be in bed by 8.30 every day if I physically can. Because mm. funny, the night before I got to sleep at about 
ten thirty or eleven o'clock, which is late for me. And then the next day, yesterday, just didn't flow right. Do you know? So, yeah. what does that ten out of ten day look like? Imagine you did that every day, and you had a ten out of ten or almost a ten out of ten day energetically. You know, the rest doesn't matter, George. Yeah, the rest doesn't matter. The energy matters. You know, like the how you feel is everything. Mm. Like everything. How did you feel yesterday? Well, in the moment, I didn't like it, but I knew it had to be done to move the properties closer to a sale. But I don't like people being upset. Like I, mm. I know it's not my fault, but and it's my job to guide them. It's like a doctor giving a diagnosis. But I thought last night exactly that. Like I was do- dying yesterday. I went from crying vendor to crying vendor to crying <laughs> vendor pretty much. And, but I thought, you know what? It's not a bad day. Because I had a really serious one-on-one conversation, or one-on-two conversation, and I've moved their property a bit closer to a sale, which allows them to go and do what they want to do. Hmm. It's worse if I didn't say it. And you learned so much stuff yesterday. Yeah, I did. Like, yeah. like do that 80 times <coughs> over the next yeah. couple of months. You're going to be that experienced. So there's always good in something. Yeah, th- that's probably what it is. You've got to find the good in it. But at the time, like, it's, yeah, it's not hard. good. It's, it's really hard. hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D- yeah. It's hard to keep your energy steady because it's like, whew, this is the thing. It's like, whew, okay, in five minutes, I've got to do it again. And then it's like an yeah. hour and a half. And then it's like, Exactly. Five minutes, I've got to do it again. <laughs> like, boom, boom, boom. Yep. I'm so relieved today because, say what I said. Yeah, it could. That's all I could do. Yeah. I did the right thing by all of the owners. The properties will sell at some point. But it is much harder when, like, to have that sort of energetic conversation. It is. But stay That's where the real mastery comes. Yeah. When, when things are just easy, you're not mastering anything. Mm. It's like sitting in the bay with a huge storm going on. Well, well, that's great, but you're not going to be a good sailor. You're just hiding in the bay. But if you're out there getting smashed by the waves and doing all this and navigating through and you get to the destination, but you rode through this huge storm and you do that, like those crusty old... I talked about it on a podcast yesterday with Yimmy, but those crusty old sailors, I'd want a crusty old sailor that's been around for 85 years and been through every storm you can imagine to take me around somewhere out the ocean or do you want the guy who looks really polished who just pulls into the bay every every time there's a strong wind just in case it gets a bit rocky Mm. you know what i mean can i ask you a question yeah so you rode through the gfc that was almost well long time ago you probably were at a different level in your career frequency energy you probably hadn't learned all that sort of stuff this isn't the gfc at the moment but it's definitely a tricky market to navigate it's tricky economy so even for people that aren't in real estate do you remember what you were doing back yeah. back then? Like, mm. would you do anything different now if we were going through it again? Because you basically said, I just gripped my teeth and worked yeah. 800 hours a week just to make sure that we had money in the bank. Yeah. But, but d- did you remember feeling like, oh. Yeah, every day. Yeah. I remember getting home just shaking because I was just so stressed. Mm. Like, I'm like shaking on the phone like this, talking to people standing out in front of the house at the, in, in the night. Like, I just doubled down on everything. Just trying to like just get through it. Just keep the business alive. Yeah, yeah. And even now, it's not a different feeling. It's more like you manage the feeling a bit better. Like it's sort of um, I probably more understand me better. So yeah, right. Yeah, like when that's why the energy management is so important. The rest, if you do the other one first, you feel very you almost burn out. Yeah, yeah. Do you think if your energy set better in the morning, you're a bit more resilient? Yeah. Like if if So I had a great day yesterday. By the end, I was just drained. But if I was late and if I woke up late and then I rushed to an appointment and then I had had to do those three appointments, they would have been a billion times worse. They would have. They would have. Because I was positive. All right. Like, yeah. if I was in a different headspace, it would have been a different story yesterday. And I just see things as moments in time now. Mm. Like, it's a very different view I have of things now. It's like... You know, when Jackson was off the rails when he was younger, I see it now as a moment in time. Mm. You know, I've just got to stay by his side and now look where he is now. Same as with you. Like, this is a moment in time for you. But I know in two years' time, you're going to look back and go, that was the best thing that ever happened. Like, I've learned so many skills. You know, think about the arrogant Jordan four years ago 
who thought he knew everything and bleached his hair blonde and taking pictures with no shirt on, just saying how amazing he is. <laughs> but think about it. Yeah. Like to who you are now. Like mm. I'm that proud of who you are mm. now. Mm. And you're just going to go from strength to strength to strength to strength. And my job is to say like, go that way a little bit, go that way a little bit and yeah. let you run as well. Like so good. Um, but I really would like people, the programming your mind for success is what I'm talking about. I think that all that is, is like, you've got to have a target. You have to have a target. Whatever that target is for each person, that one target. And then that's got to be like drive you so hard that you have like unlimited energy towards it. And a bit like that, uh, that person that says, what if you've got a negative partner? If you have no target and you're focused on your partner, how negative they are and all that, your energy goes. Like you yeah. just have no energy. Like you almost like feel drained. Whereas if you've got something that just literally lights you up, and it could be anything, Jordan. It could be be worth X amount of money or look a certain way or be number one or have the biggest company in the world, whatever it is. You've got to have it. So every single day you're looking at that thing running and it, it's, there's something about that focus. That's why you can't have too many. Mm. There's something about that focus which creates like a laser beam and you just have this and it blocks other things out and you're like i'm going for that you know like i'm i'm going for it mm. and then then you sort of have that view there and then you go all right what do i need to do today and who do i need to be and what do i need to learn about and how do i whatever and that part is the the energy management part and the and the action but you have to manage your energy first so you've almost got to go how do i need to feel so what, what does a winner feel like what, what does a winner feel like? Someone who's just like got it rocking. What do they feel like, Jordan? Explain driven, that to me. Driven. Explain the feeling of though. Yeah. How are they feeling every day? Um, I would say f like completely energized. Yes. Like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're like. Just what, what's an emotion that goes with that? Um, pumped. Pumped. That's yeah. good one. So they're just pumped. So if you're a winner and things are just like going so good you feel pumped mm. but you know if you feel pumped before you actually have the result the result's going to match anyway mm. so that's why my mind is always at like the post i put up this morning i circled excitement on the emotional guidance scale excitement is is exactly where i want to be every day yeah when you're excited things just go better you know so does excitement does that go off and go hang on i can't be excited because inflation's seven point whatever percent mm. like like do you go oh, i can't get excited because inflation's seven percent yeah not at all no i go mm. i'm excited because i'm here with you and i'm here with jack and we're doing a podcast and what i'm just in the moment right now i'm excited about that thing and then the next thing i'm going to do is take that excitement to the next one and the next one and that's going to go sometimes but your, your job is to manage it back up again. So if you spend all that time in excitement, what's going to happen? Yeah, you'll achieve your goals. Yeah, at some point. Mm. And you'll attract things that match it and you'll be like, you'll be that winner. Because that's what winners feel. When they win the Australian Open, they're like, yay! Yeah, That's excitement. So why would you not put that first? Mm. Or... Would you sit there and read the paper, the Daily Financial Review, and the sky's falling in and this is happening and that's blah, blah, and you're worried, anxious, and concerned, and that's what you take into your day, and that's where you hover. What are you going to do? Yeah, attract all the bad things. That's right, mm. because you're feeding your mind, and that's when I'm talking about programming your mind. I'm programming my mind into the results I want in the future by saying I choose to focus on this. Like, yeah. that's what I think every day. And then I'm going to eat really well and I'm gonna do a little bit of exercise and I'm going to, you know, if I'm with the right partner, which I am, I'm going to treat Tara super well and I'm make sure Jackson's got this and blah, blah, blah. And that I'm going to fill my day out with stuff that's just making me feel amazing. And if you do that over and over and over and over and again, but imagine I was complaining about Tara, talking behind your back, mm. Saying Jackson's just a friggin' dropkick, can't stand the guy, la, 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 and I lived in that space, what's your day going to be like? Mm, exactly the same, we'll match it. Yeah, totally. Mm. So programming your mind is nothing more than a choice of what you're focusing on. That's what I think. Where are you going to focus? Where are you going to put... I've got energy coming off me now. 
like mm. right now. Mm. So when you're talking to someone like this, our energy is exchanging. Can you feel it? Yeah. Yeah. And you know when you look at someone's eyes and yeah. they talk to you, they, 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 I, there's something about that guy who looks you straight in the eye. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Why do you think people like that? Because I think it's, it, it, um, like it sets the person as a high-energy, alpha, leader, confident person. It does? Yeah. Yep, so they're bringing their... But it also exchanges energy. It does. That's all you're looking for. Yeah. yeah well, it does. It <laughs> yeah. does both. So Tony Robbins says you can see into the people's soul when you mm. look at their pupils, which is yeah. true. So I can see right into you. But my, I reckon, you know, on the, on the cartoons and things, they've got lasers coming out mm. their eyes. I reckon that happens anyway. Mm. So when I'm looking straight at you, your eyes are going straight into mine and it's like this connection thing, like, yeah. like that. Mm. But when the people are darting all around, you're not getting my energy Yeah. You know, at all. Yeah. So when you're a high energy being, everyone feels it around you. Mm. This is the this is a description for this physicist yeah. character, but everyone feels it around you. Everyone feels it around you. Jackson, can you feel the energy? Yes. Yes, and you uplift people with your energy. But that goes for everything: your results, your money, your stuff, the day, everything. So if you stayed in that spot, you stayed there for a prolonged period of time, everything is going to follow. Does it really matter what Albanese says? Yeah, not at all. No. A little grub. Like it's <laughs> like but do you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you stay in that pump that pumped spot every day and that was and you learn to do that and be a master of that, imagine what your life's gonna be. But you're doing it with that target in mind. You're doing it with that target of I wanna end up there one day. The only way to end up there is to match the frequency over time and become that person internally. Then it has to match you. It's a law. Like, it's a lot. Isn't it funny how wealthier people just keep getting wealthier most of the time? Mm. Like, why does that happen? Because they don't want the money. They don't need the money, but more finds them. Because they have a, a vibration of ease, expectation, knowing, momentum. They've built that, that wealth momentum for so long because they've wanted it and wanted it and worked towards it and thought about it and wanted it and wanted it and wanted it. And it gets like a stream and it just keeps attracting more and more and more. It might go up and down a little bit sometimes based on what they're focused on. But that's how it works. So why would mm. you not live like that? Everybody should. Yeah. Why, yeah. <laughs> why would you not? Yeah. That's the secret to life. That's the secret to success. And of programming your mind. Programming your mind is nothing more than making a choice on how you want to live. Like, why would you not live in that space? That's what I think to myself. Like, Because people get used to living in the other space. It becomes normal. How do you mean? I don't know. Like, I, I think about this all the time. But I think people just, like, they don't, without increasing your frequency, you don't know what it's like. If you're always on the one level, you're used to that. Without actually making some changes and being brave and doing that and increasing it, it's hard to know that there's more out there. I think people just stay with what they're doing. Yeah, because yeah, they're used to it. Because it's easy and they're yeah. used to it and Takes it's work. routine. Yeah. yeah. Takes work. When when things are comfortable, you, you don't you don't progress. Mm. Like you're just there, like sitting in front of the heater at home. You're just there, you know, watching TV, letting time pass you by. It's like comfortable feels like. Mm. But um, but imagine you made a decision today to say, I'm going to live every day to my full energetic potential. Every every day and emotional, full energetic and emotional potential. Imagine where you would end up. Imagine. Like, that's why when I say, oh, best body in Australia, like, I don't even know what that is. But all I know is I'm on that journey and I'm going to make my body respond. That's what I'm going to do, just to see what I can do with this thing because it interests me. So when you're interested in something, that's why it's really important to give time to things that make your, your bells ring. You know, yours is golf at the moment and things like that. It's like when in work, in career, and it's like when you've got to do stuff that even if you're working a job that you don't exactly, you know, love, but it's, you know, helping you pay the bills and be all right, blah, blah. Mm. You've got to have something else that really interests you and invest all of your time you physically can in there because it fills your tanks and does all that sort of stuff. But it, it like gives you this heightened sense of feeling, mm. you know, like it's, it's like you want, it's unlimited, like when you're with someone, have you ever been with someone that you love hanging out with, like a girl in the first month? It's like, yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, when you're younger yeah. and you're sitting in the car and you're kissing and all that sort of yeah. stuff. And like 
eight hours goes by and it feels like two minutes and you're like, oh, I've got to, you know, got yeah. to go. Because you're in this vortex of like, pumpness or whatever you want to call it like this space where things just feel so good and it just like time just goes and that's why it becomes um, almost limitless with energy that's how important it is that's why choice is so important why would you do anything you don't want to do it i don't understand and i under i understand you got to do stuff sometimes but today i'll do 95 percent of the stuff i just want to do yeah like someone asked me for dinner the other night, a couple of nights ago, and I said, no, to, straight to them, no. I go, why? I said, I don't want to. They're like, okay, all right, all right, that's fine, cool. <laughs> uh, thanks. But I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. want to. Because I see it as three hours of sitting there pretending to make s- conversation when I don't want to. I want to be in bed ready for the next day. Do you know? Mm. So anyway, programming your mind is how good do you want your life to be? And then what do you, you said it before, George, what are you prepared to do every day to own that day and kill it with energetic perfection or energetic pumpness? Like, do you know? Yeah. Like, what are you prepared to do to do that? Because I reckon that is the secret to success. That's the secret to changing your life. If you can physically do that enough times through the year and enough times the next year and next year and make that your life quest, you will have the most amazing life ever.